we meet across time and space in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord, our Redeemer, be with you and also with all of you. Well, welcome to our live stream service this morning from the Ratby Rectory. I hope that you are all well. And do remember that whenever you are watching this, wherever you are watching this, we are united together as the body of Christ. And that although we may not be together in person, we are together in spirit through the power of God. And so welcome to you all and let us worship together. For those of you who are watching this later and wish to follow the service, it is available through our A Church Near You website. Do just simply search for the churches of Gruby or Ratby and you will find it uploaded on there for this week. Well, as we come together, let us open in prayer. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. Well, we'll say now the Beatitudes as we remember what it is that Christ taught us in following him. So let us hear our Lord's blessing on those who follow him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in spirit and the pure in heart for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So let us just hold a moment of silence. Let us say together our prayer of preparation as we ask God to help us cleanse the thoughts of our hearts that we may worship him well, wherever we may be. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, beginning at verse 6 to verse 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, through, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us sing. Do sing at home if you would like to, or simply listen. And as we remember that no matter what the times of trouble may be, the Lord is our shepherd and has eternal promises for us all, and that we may know his peace and his blessing upon us. 
So this is Stuart Townend's version of The Lord's My Shepherd. Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you alone. And I will trust in you alone. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead. Guides my ways in righteousness, and he anoints my head with oil, and my cup it overflows with joy. I feast on his pure trust in you alone, and I will trust in you alone, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me. Our second reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 11, beginning at the first verse to verse 45, the death and raising of Lazarus. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. 
Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death. But they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man had kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you? that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus! 
come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of God, who is creator, redeemer and sustainer. And may our hearts and minds be transformed by our encounter with a living, risen Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, I promise I will keep the sermon short, as I'm sure it is a somewhat different experience for many of us uh, watching worship over a live stream. But today's readings are beautiful readings, and they remind us of the importance of life in the Spirit. Our first reading from Romans has Paul talking about the flesh, and we need to understand what it is he means by the flesh. We tend to think of it in the physical, those things that we do, and yes, that does mean things like sex and eating. But what Paul is really referring to in the flesh is the idea of a life that is separated from God, that is focused on itself and not on the love and the purposes of God. And so it is a much wider meaning, and we need to remember that that is what Paul is referring to, because to look in the ways of the flesh, in the ways of the world, is ultimately the way that leads, sadly, to death. But if we live in the Spirit, if we have God in our heart, then we are set free. We are set free from the fear of death and all that our failure to love and follow God has resulted in. This is the very reason that Jesus died upon the cross for us, that we might live and dwell in his spirit and have that offer of eternal life. And our reading from John is the physical reminder of that spiritual reality. In the raising of Lazarus, Jesus shows his power to conquer death, not only in this story, but for our story as well, and for all time. Jesus reminds us that he is the resurrection and the life. We need to hold that in our hearts. And perhaps in the midst of the fear that we may all be having at this time of the coronavirus pandemic, we need to hold on to that hope that we have in the spirit and the love of God. Because God loves us and loves us deeply. Because within this passage in John is my absolute favourite verse in the Bible. It can be translated as simply two words. Jesus wept. I love those words for they reveal to me so much of the nature of Jesus, the nature of God. Jesus wept out of love. He wept because he had lost his friend and for the compassion he felt for those around who were mourning. Perhaps he wept even more widely because he knew that we were all destined to, to die until he came and offered his redemption. I am the resurrection and the life, says Jesus. Do you believe this? And if we believe this, then we can share in his resurrection life. We are offered a part of his kingdom, a place with him, reconciled through the work of Jesus Christ upon the cross. On this fifth Sunday of Lent, we are approaching that time when we feel perhaps a great sorrow as we walk with Christ, his walk to the cross. But we look, of course, to the great joy that comes on Easter Day when we see the resurrection of Jesus Christ one who is raised and raised for eternity. It is in that resurrection that we will share. And I hope that that brings us comfort at this time. And knowing that the Jesus who wept for us, the God who wept for us, loves us so much 
that he was willing to give his life for us. That is the most amazing gift that anyone can give to another. And we know that now in our own times, as so many are risking their own health and even lives to bring succour to those who are in need as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. In a moment, we will be praying for all of those who are involved and for all of those who are suffering. But keep them every day in your prayers. And may they always be held in the knowledge and love of God and of his spirit, strengthened by it, knowing that whatever trials we suffer in this life, the promise of eternity is the one that lasts forever. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. We now move on to a time of confession and forgiveness. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. We say together the Agnus Dei. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. Let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you, you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and for ever. Amen. Well, let us now pray. And let us first join together in the prayer that our Saviour taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And we continue now in prayer, bringing our hopes and our fears to our Lord, who we know hears and answers our call. Lord God, we pray for your church across the world and for all people of faith. May we, through our love for you and for our neighbour, always serve those people that we are called to serve. May we be lights in the darkness, bringing the light of hope, May we have the courage to pick up the telephone, to phone those who might be in need, those who are lonely and alone, that we may be your church spread throughout the world. 
We pray that you will bless all who are in leadership and in our own diocese. We pray, pray for our bishops, Martin and Gully, for our archdeacons, Claire and Richard, for all area deans and assistant area deans, asking that we may all support one another as we support, seek to support all across the world. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your world. We pray for all of the efforts that are being made to bring the coronavirus pandemic under control. We pray for each and every person to have a spirit of wisdom that we may do those things which we have been asked to do, no matter how hard they may be, that we may care for one another as we seek to halt the spread of this pernicious disease. We pray for all governments and the decisions that they make, that you will lighten their hearts with the wisdom that they need at this time. We pray for all regions of the world, and we pray that we may be spread by a pandemic of love and not of fear. And we ask that you bring us closer to you and to your comfort in these troubled and dark times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the communities of which we are a part. In just a moment of silence, perhaps you would like to name the village, town or city in which you live, knowing that God hears. So for me, Lord, I pray especially for those places you have called me to serve, for Gruby and Ratley. I pray for all of the people in these, my communities, and for all the communities that each person listening now or later in time has named or will name, knowing that you, who are a God who is beyond time and space, can hear and answer whenever we call upon you. May you bless our communities. May we work together to bring comfort to one another. And may this pandemic bring us closer together, that we may be communities of love. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and suffering at this time. We pray especially for those who may be suffering as a result of COVID-19. We pray also for those who may be suffering from other things, whose operations may have been delayed and so who are continuing perhaps in pain. We pray for those who are feeling isolated and lonely and whose mental health may be suffering. And we pray for all of those who are trying to bring comfort for all who are telephoning one another, for those who work in our NHS, for those who work in social services, and for all people who are working together to ensure that those who are suffering know that they are loved. And may they all know your loving and comforting and healing presence in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for those who have died. Again, in a moment of silence, we call to mind those whom we may have known, whether they died recently or longer ago, knowing that through your power and through your resurrection, that death is not the end, but that thing that one day will lead to the resurrection in which we will all share and we will be together in your kingdom. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. And Lord, finally, we pray for ourselves. We pray that through the power of your spirit, we may remain strong in these times, knowing that even though we may be physically separated, we are united as the body of Christ, united in the power of love 
and that we may take comfort in this, knowing that we are never alone, but that you are with us always. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. And the collect for today. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let us now affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Well, we're going to try and sing once more. And we're going to sing The Spirit Lives to Set Us Free. Although we might be bound in our own homes, through the power of the Spirit we walk free in the nature of God, walking in his light, walking in the light that comes through Jesus Christ, the light that banishes the darkness. The Spirit lives to set us free. Walk, walk in the light. He binds us all in unity. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. Jesus promised life to all. Walk, walk in the light. The dead were wakened by his call. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. He died in pain on Calvary. Walk, walk in the light to save the lost like you and me. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. We know his death was not the end. Walk, walk in the light. He gave his spirit to be our friend. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. There's Jesus that in heaven Walk, walk in the light The fire's going to reveal Walk, walk in the light 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 of the Lord the Spirit lives in you and me. Walk, walk in the light. The lights will shine for all to see. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light, walk in the light of the Lord. Let us pray. God of compassion, 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have reconciled your people to yourself. As we follow his example of prayer and fasting, may we obey you with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, normally at this point, I would say that it's time for refreshments. Well, I have to leave you to make your own tea and coffee um, and have a biscuit at home. But may God bless you and be with you always. And I will be back here on Tuesday evening um, at nine o'clock for Compline and again on Thursday. And of course, back again on Sunday at 10. I look forward to worshipping with you across time and space in the power of God through his spirit. Amen.